Hello and welcome to Miss Hook's lecture on bones. It's going to be a okay. It's a great pun. First, we're going to go through the function of bones. We're going to look at the shapes of bones, how they're formed, and their parts and how they're reshaped. Okay, so first functions. Bones support. There our framework they give us structure. Next, protection. I'm sure you can think of a couple areas where we have bones outside of important vital organs, like your skull around your brain, your vertebrae around your spinal cord, your ribs and sternum around your thoracic cavity with your heart and lungs, uh, your pelvic bones protecting some of, some of your lower abdominal organs. Next, movement. So bone tissue doesn't contract, but as the framework, it allows the muscles somewhere to join to so that when they contract, they cause movement. Next, storage. Uh, your bone stores a couple different things. The things that make bone hard are calcium phosphates. Those are very important minerals. Phosphorus is going to be important for like making ATP. Calcium is going to be important for contracting your muscles, sending nervous system signals. And so both of these are important to not have get too low in your body. So you want to maintain a level of homeostasis. So if you get low, you can tell the cells there that break bone down. Just start breaking it down, releasing some in the blood so you can continue to function. You also have what's called yellow bone marrow, and that stores triglycerides or fats so that we can use those for energy. Last function we're going to talk about is blood cell formation, hematopoiesis. You'll also see it called hemopoiesis as well. And what that is, is that means that we're making new white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. Inside some of our bones, there's what's called red bone marrow. Yellow bone marrow had fat. Red bone marrow has these stem cells that when they get the signal, they differentiate into your different blood cells. Uh, when our oxygen carrying capacity is low, we'll make new red blood cells. If we have an immune response, we'll make more white blood cells, and if we need more platelets for clotting, we'll make those. Classifications of bones. Bones are classified by four different shapes. Long bones, these bones are what you would think. They're longer than they are wide. Uh, several examples in your limbs, like your humerus, femur, tibia, fibula, etc. Next, short bones. So these are kind of square shape in general. So good examples there, your carpals and your tarsals, your wrist and your ankle bones, as well as uh, sesamoid bones. Those are bones that form within tendons. An example of that would be your patella, your kneecap. Next, flat bones. Flat bones, their internal structure all looks similar. It's got your sternum, lots of your skull bones. And last, irregular. So these are odd shapes, like your vertebrae, definitely interesting and irregular, and your pelvic girdle, your hip bones. And on those four different shaped bones, you'll see these different bone markings, these different points out, these different grooves, these holes in them, uh, depressions, and they are important. So when you look at the bones, you'll learn about the bone itself and then the different markings on the bone. And those are going to be points where you have muscles attaching, ligaments, tendons. You can have interesting shapes when you like have articulations or joints. Then you can have holes, uh, which might have blood vessels running through it, for example. In lab, you'll look at this more. You'll fill out a table going through different examples. There are two microscopic forms of bone. First, what you look at in lab generally is compact bone. It's got the tree trunk structure that you can see here. In the middle of each trunk, you've got a circle called the central canal. We'll look more at this later where you've got blood vessels running through. And then you've got cells and hard portions running around the outside. Whereas spongy bone, we've got a lot more spaces in here. You have these uh, 
trabeculae, these beams of bone, like there, and blood vessels and marrow going through it. So here's an example of real bone. On each side of your skull, on the end, is compact bone. It's really dense and good structure. Both sides, sorry, my drawing is not perfect by any means, but it's there. And then in the middle, you can see we've got this spongy bone. And when you look at that more in depth, you can see the trabeculae, these beams, connecting area to area. Now that you've kind of seen what a flat bone looks like, we're going to look more in depth at a long bone. So here's the structure of a long bone. It's got that first picture we were looking at with compact bone running all the way around the side. So you can see it in here. Lining it here. And then the middle is compact bone all the way until there's a space. Whereas the heads of each side, they've got some spongy bone in them. Spongy, spongy, there you go. And the same thing would be going on down here with spongy bone. There are two different types of things going on here that you can see. You can see the end looks different from the middle. Each end is called an epiphysis, plural epiphyses. The middle, the shaft portion, is called the diaphysis. And so that's just got the compact bone and the space. Whereas the epiphyses, they'll have spongy bone and a line of bone here. Going along the outside, you've got a couple different things. On the ends of long bone, you have cartilage. It's made out of hyaline cartilage tissue. It's called your articular cartilage. Think about why we might want cartilage on the outside. It helps reduce friction. These are at points where our bones are moving. We want to make it as smooth as possible. Good. And then this middle part here is the epiphyseal line. If you're still growing, it has a different name. Then it's cartilage and it's called the epiphyseal plate. That's your growth plate. But when you're a fully grown adult, after about 20, it ossifies completely and it's your epiphyseal line. Okay. Lining the compact bone on the outside and the compact bone here, we've got membranous layers. It also lines the spongy bone in here. There are a couple different parts to it, uh, but these membranes have our osteogenic cells the cells that are building bone and breaking bone down. The outside is called your periosteum. So here you can see the outside, they've ripped it open so you can see it sitting there. There's our periosteum. There's a fibrous layer, and then there is the osteogenic layer. And that is kind of glued down to the bone by Sharpie's fibers. They're right here. And so if you take a bone in lab and you pull at the membrane, the periosteum there, you'll be able to see those Sharpie's fibers, the glue holding it down. And then on the inside, lining this space, is the endosteum. Let's see if I can write this E-N-D-O-S-T-E-U-M, endosteum. And so then that has the cells that build up and break down bone as well. Oh, there you can see it right here. And then in that space in the middle of your diaphysis, you've got your yellow bone marrow. It's really greasy. It kind of feels like bacon fat. It's made of triglycerides. And then the last thing that we'll add to this picture Okay, so you've got your spongy bone in the epiphysis, and lining that bone is the endosteum, the cells that build up and break down bone. And then you've got spaces. 
that space is going to be filled with bone marrow. Depending on your age and what bone you're looking at, it can either be red marrow or yellow bone marrow. Red bone marrow is what I'm drawing right here. That's where we have the hematopoiesis occur. It's in the spaces. That's where we make our red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. The areas that are red bone marrow are going to decrease as you age. Uh, and when you're an adult, they're only going to be found in the heads of your humerus and femur, ilium, and then your flat bones of your skull. Okay, so now that we've covered the whole picture, let's look at it one piece at a time. Right, so long bone, epiphysis, diaphysis. Ends are epiphyses, long portion is diaphysis. You'll often see proximal and distal if it's on a limb. So like if this is your humerus, it is. The proximal portion would be the one that's closer to the body trunk. The distal epiphysis would be the one that's further away. Then you've got the diaphysis. It's lined by compact bone and there's that space inside lined by endosteum, filled with yellow bone marrow. And then the epiphyses, spongy bone on the inside, compact bone on the outside. And then you've got that epiphyseal line or plate. So remember, if you're still growing, it's the epiphyseal plate, your growth plate. If you're done growing, it's your epiphyseal line, it's ossified. And this is cartilaginous when you're growing, when it's the plate, because cartilage is able to divide and move more easily. Bone is more difficult, so it makes it easier to grow your bones. And then on the outside, you've got that hyaline cartilage, which is your articular cartilage, where your bones articulate, or we have joints. And then you've got the periosteum. So lining the whole outside of your bone, you've got this double layer membrane with fibrous connective tissue, and then the inner layer is the osteogenic layer. That's where you've got your osteoblasts and your osteoclasts. You're building and breaking down your bone here. Then on the inside with the endosteum, you've got osteoblasts and clasts as well. You've got lots of blood flow coming into your periosteum through these nutrient foramina or holes. And you've got the Sharpie's fibers that glue it down. Yep, there's the endosteum lining the in in internal surfaces like your medullary cavity, that space with the yellow bone marrow, as well as the spongy bone and the epiphysis. Okay. And then flat bone, it's going to look very similar. You're going to have the compact bone and spongy bone. And then on the outside, you'll have periosteum, same idea, on both sides. And then lining these spaces, endosteum. And inside there, you'll find red bone marrow. And then you've got the trabeculae, these beams, uh, holding everything together, woven there. and then they'll have red bone marrow in the middle. Okay. So red bone marrow in infants, it's found everywhere in spongy bone and in the medullary cavity or medullary uh, of long bones. But then in adults, it's only in the spongy bone of flat bones and then the head of your humerus and femur. Okay. Now let's look at the microscopic structure of compact bone more in depth. In tissues, you should have looked at this a little bit, but we're going to look at more structures here. So your functional unit is the osteon. Remember, a functional unit is basically the smallest piece with all the parts. So each of these tree trunks is an osteon, and those form around this central portion, and then you've got cells and spaces around the outside, and then you've got this hard matrix, uh, extracellular matrix on the outside. So the harder uh, extracellular matrix, the solid matrix, is called the lamella. And they thought it was just all these calcium phosphates and some collagen making it hard. 
Uh, but what they found in the last couple of years is that there are these tubes there with collagen and inside there there's gel. And so that helps give our bones a little bit more flexibility than we thought. We'll see how when young uh, children, their bones are a little more flexible. As we become adults, they become a little bit more brittle. But we still have this gel-like structure we didn't know was there. Okay, next. That central portion uh, in the osteon that has the blood vessels and nerves going through it is called your central canal. That's in the middle. And what happens is then you'll have forming around the central canal, when you build bone, you'll have these layers. So you have these central canals running up and down. You also have blood vessels that go and connect the central canals together. So those would be the Volksmann's canals. So they make sure that we get blood all the way through. Now let's look at a single osteon more in depth. So the background, the extracellular matrix, is the lamella. This whole tree trunk functional unit is the osteon. Central canal in the center with our blood vessels. And then around the outside, you've got these dark holes, these spaces. The spaces are called the lacuna. That's the structure there. And the cells inside there are called osteocytes. When they were on the outside, when they were on the periosteum and still building bone, they were called osteoblasts. But then they got trapped, and now they just maintain matrix. So they're called osteocytes. And then you've got these hair-like structures, the canaliculi. So coming out of each lacuna, you've got these little stripes. Those are these little canals that lead from the central canal out to make sure the osteon gets its blood that it needs. So here's a nice view showing the osteon, the central canal, and those lacuna with osteocytes inside. A reminder of the types of cells we'll see here. First you've got osteoblasts. Osteoblasts build bone. Blast build matrix. Sites maintain. So those are the mature blasts that have been trapped, they just maintain. Osteoclasts are actually derivatives of our white blood cells, and they break bone down. So anytime we have low calcium levels, we need to break bone down. Osteoclasts are uh, alerted, they start breaking it down. It's also important for us to constantly be regenerating, breaking down, and making new bone so that we can keep it fresh and not brittle. Osteoclasts are important there. And then you might see the word osteoid. When we form bone before it ossifies and gets hard, it's called osteoid before it becomes the lamella. So most of bone's mass is these hard mineral salts that make up the lamella. Uh, the calcium phosphates make it really hard. And here's citrate. That's the discovery I was talking about where they found the goo. Uh, the gel inside of the collagen tubes so that they could have a little more flexibility. Okay. So now we're going to look at the different ways that we make bone through osteogenesis or ossification, the making of bone tissue. And we'll look at it when we make it as embryos, uh, as it grows into adulthood, and then once we're adults, we'll look at how we constantly remodel, build up, and break down, and repair bone. So first, formation in the embryo. Begins about two months in, and bones form in one of two ways. Intramembranous ossification or endochondral ossification. Based on the name, you should have a, an okay idea of what's happening. Intramembranous means within a membrane. So you'll have these layers of fibrous membrane where bone tissue starts to uh, occur. Endochondral, within cond is cartilage. Chondrocytes, remember that? Endochondral is in cartilage. So basically we make these little hyaline cartilage versions of our bones and those slowly get ossified until we have our fully developed bones. Intramembranous makes most of our flat bones like our skull and the clavicles, your collarbones. So here's a picture of cells inside the membranous sheets. All the cells that make up connective tissues come from what are called these mesenchyme cells and then they start to differentiate. They start to ossify. You'll see this osteoid, the unhardened matrix occur before it becomes the lamella. There's osteoblasts building up our bone. 
and then they start to have this calcified background occurring, it starts to get hard. And any osteoblasts that get trapped while we make it become osteocytes, and the space they're trapped in is the lacuna. Then we have what's called a woven bone forming, so that looks a lot like the spongy bone, and that's when it's going to become next. So then you'll have this spongy bone, the diploe, and then on the outside you'll have these osteoblasts building bone, and we'll have some contact bone there. So I would pause and go through the steps of intramembranous ossification. The other way that most of our bones are made is endochondral, from these hyaline cartilage versions. And so we'll look at how hyaline cartilage slowly gets replaced. So you start out with hyaline cartilage, you have this bone collar occur, and then you start having bone form. It forms from the middle out. And so then once it's fully ossified, you've got this lovely remaining portion from the hyaline cartilage. You've got the articular cartilage lining our joints, and then you've got the epiphyseal plate. So those are both rem uh, remnants from this growth that occurred earlier. And the reason that we do this is because it's much easier to grow cartilage, as I said before. So by making cartilage first and then just replacing it with bone, we can grow larger faster. Next, we've made our bones, and now we're just growing in length and remodeling. So growing in length, that just occurs at the epiphyseal plate. The cartilage cells there divide, and as they divide, they spread out, and they get replaced with bone tissue. And then remodeling, we're breaking down bone, resorbing it, and building it back up by growth from our osteoblasts. So osteoclasts come by, break it down, uh, osteoblasts build it back up, and we've got some fresh bone there. Here's a picture showing the bones that have started to ossify, but you can still see there's portions that are invisible. Those are still hyaline cartilage. And then intramembranous, you'll have these soft membranous tissue areas, your fontanelles, your soft spots. And those will make it easier for childbirth for the head to fit through, and then also, because it's more flexible, it allows our brain to grow much more quickly. So how do we regulate this growth? How are the osteoclasts and blasts uh, told to get started? Well, it's going to be through hormonal regulation. Uh, so during infancy, when you're young, that epiphyseal plate activity, the cartilage dividing there, stimulated by growth hormone. And then during puberty, you'll have these sex hormones, testosterones, estrogens, and they'll cause this growth to occur more rapidly. You'll have masculinization and feminization of features, especially the pelvis. You'll see this change in angles there, we'll look at. And then it's going to tell your epiphyseal plates to ossify and become epiphyseal lines. So here's female and there's male. Females, you can see, have a much wider arch here. Males are much smaller, and they have a larger uh, hole area to fit offspring through. Okay. So now let's look at remodeling a little more in depth, where osteoblasts build bone and the osteoclasts break it down. Why would we want to do that? We want to replace old bone. And then we'd also want to put it down where we need more strength. Uh, so as long as you have all the building blocks, lots of calcium, phosphorus, you're ready to go. And then if we ever need any of these building blocks to do other things, we can break bone down. That's going to be especially important for calcium. And we talked about this briefly before, but calcium is really important for homeostasis. Uh, it's important for muscle contraction. It removes the block on your contractile proteins, so we can contract without it. No contraction. It helps our uh, neurons have their resting membrane potential so that we can properly send these electrical impulses. It's important for clotting, secretions, and cell division. So we definitely need to make sure we have enough to do all those processes. So the two control loops that you have uh, one's going to be hormones for calcium, 
and then another is going to be these mechanical forces. So Wolf's Law is basically that the thicker the bone is in an area has to do with how much stress it's under, how much it needs to, how strong it needs to be. So if we do more weightlifting, we put more pressure on a bone, the osteoblasts are going to build that bone there. So that's why women with osteoporosis are recommended to do these uh, weight-bearing exercises. And then you can see that where bones are most likely to buckle or break, they're the thickest. So what happens when they break? It's called a fracture. You can either have a compound <laughs> where the bone comes out of the skin and you can see it, or simple closed where it doesn't. Which one of those you have is going to be important for doctors and their ideas of how to set it back up. Any book that you look at is going to have different types of common fractures, but some of them will be the same. Comminuted, comminuted, multiple fragments of bone. Uh, three or more pieces. Compression, the bone is crushed. So like here you've got vertebrae, very often occurs in osteoporosis, uh, and they just get crushed there. Spiral occurs when you have a twisting motion. Epiphysis occurs when the epiphysis and diaphysis are broken apart from each other. So that'll usually happen along the epiphyseal plate before uh, ossification occurs and it becomes the epiphyseal line. Depressed, it's pushed inwards, and green stick, that's where only part of the bone breaks. So that's uh, more common in children when they have these more flexible bones. Part of it can break when the other part doesn't. Good. So what do you do if our bone has been fractured? First, you're going to damage all the blood vessels there. So then those broken blood vessels are going to have a hematoma forming, this clot of blood. It's going to be swollen, painful, infected. We're going to get white blood cells in there to help take away any debris and, and perform immune response. Then that gets turned into fibrocartilage. Uh, this fibrocartilage callus or soft callus occurs as those white blood cells start eating and breaking down any debris. Then you've got what's called a bony callus. So this is kind of like the woven bone that we saw and an intramembranous ossification. And then basically, after that point, you're just remodeling. You're having everything match up, fitting it all back down properly. Now let's look at a couple of homeostatic imbalances. Osteomalacia, that's soft, weakened bones in adults. So if there isn't enough calcium or vitamin D, yeah, vitamin D is important. It allows us to absorb calcium from our diet. Otherwise, it just goes right through us. Uh, you're not getting enough calcium to the bones. They're soft. So there you can see these bones have reduced calcium levels. Rickets is a lot like the last one, uh, osteomalacia, except this is in children. So when they're not getting enough calcium or vitamin D, their bones are still forming, but they're soft. So as they, they grow, they can kind of get bent. You'll see these uh, deformities occurring. It generally happens in areas where children don't get proper nutrients. They saw the oldest case of rickets ever uh, recently in Scotland, 3,000 years ago, uh, the skeleton is from. And what they think is that based on the area, they should have had enough calcium. And so they think this person was either really sick or a slave and they never saw light. Because you need light to make vitamin D, and then you need vitamin D to absorb calcium. So if you don't get any light, no calcium. And then we've got osteoporosis. So that's this group of diseases where your osteoblasts are building bone up slower than the osteoclasts are taking it down. So you're breaking it down faster than you can build it back up. So the bone will get thinner and more fragile, and then... Very little movements can cause things to break. And there you can see examples of vertebrae that have been crushed. This is more common in females going through menopause and later because they have less estrogen present to help keep building bone. 
males, their testosterone doesn't really drop to very low levels. They continue to stay high. They continue to be able to produce offspring. Whereas females, when we hit menopause, our estrogen levels drop. Our ability to put down bone is decreased. So what can we do? Well, first we can get a more calcium and vitamin D to absorb that calcium. They can do weight-bearing exercises to help put more stress on the bones to help build it up. You can give them hormone therapy, or you can help try to increase their mineral density. Okay, and that was a breeze through Chapter 6, Bones. I hope you learned. If not, go back through, watch again, pause, watch other YouTube videos. Best of luck.